What's happening peeps? Yes, I'm here with the legend himself. He scored a hat-trick against Liverpool, thank God, and I'm going to talk about that as well because I can't stand you Liverpool fans. <laughs> anyway, Kev? What's going on, D? Bruv, uh, always a pleasure, man, always a pleasure. Right, so, you don't need no introduction, but give them an introduction anyway, man. Um, yeah, Kevin Lisby, as I say, I'm from Hackney, East London. Joined Charlton uh, at a later stage in, in, in development stages. Obviously, joined there when I was 15, um, which gave me five to six six months to, to get my scholarship which is it's quite short considering some kids have been there for like four or five years yeah so obviously got my scholarship at, at, at Charlton um, first year into my scholars um, I was one of the first to get my pro there okay um, so within a year and a half I was I went from obviously getting my scholarship to to getting my pro yeah and playing in the first team and being involved in the first team so it was a bit of a whirlwind for me and um, didn't get much time to think about it but mm. um, Thank God I got there and um, implemented my game. I was able to implement my game with all the hard work I did. Yeah. Um, and obviously stayed at Charlton for a long, long time. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, right, you played in the Premiership. Mm. Um, you know, uh, you obviously went through the ranks. You went through the well, youth team, uh, I guess the, you know, the, well, the YTs kind of into, into the pro game. Mm. Um, what, what do you think's changed between you going through it and the youngsters going through it now? Yeah, I mean, as you know, I, I train a lot of young kids now, and I think, mm. I think the pressure they put on themselves, the pressure that's been put on them as well, is, is quite, is massive. Um, some parents are seeing their kids as products now, yeah. rather than kids. Where in my day, it was about the love of the game, playing it. Mm. So I think, I think, I think these kids will realise as you get to a certain level, there's a certain level of pressure that comes with it. Yeah. And I feel like these younger kids are feeling that pressure quite early, if mm. that makes sense. Um, which do then doesn't allow them to express themselves and to enjoy the game and love it. Yeah. Um, which is a big worry because, as I say, if you have a long career, you're going to spend a long time um, not loving something you do. Yeah. Which is quite important with, with me, for me anyway, with, with football. Yeah, and, we will, and you know, we will touch on the mental health side of it as well. Um, which, we, we, which, to be fair, we've, we've gone on, we used to be done before anyway, um, a, or a few months back before lockdown. But. Um, Right, so yeah, go but going back to going back to your career. You know, when you when you started at Charlton, you know, when you when you broke through, when you broke through to the first team, what was that? What was that feeling like? What was it? You know, that feeling of yeah. yeah what was that feeling like? You know, I was always I was always looking for the next big thing. So when I got into the first team, for me it was about scoring my first goal, okay. and then it was about sustaining my place in the team and being a major part of the team. So um, a lot of footballers will tell you it's. You ain't got time to stand still. You ain't got time to acknowledge your achievements. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, um, which is quite sad in a way. But yeah. I mean, you train five days a week, and every day you're training for a spot in a team, um, and you got four or five people challenging for your position. Yeah. So it's it's. Uh, someone asked me a few years ago, what was it like playing the Premiership, and, uh, and my response was, I can't remember. <laughs> Do you wow. know what I mean? Like, it wow. was so in, it was so intense. <laughs> you're so involved in the moment that you yeah. you, don't, you really get time to, to sit and enjoy it, but. Looking back at it now, it was a massive achievement, um, and it's a massive achievement for these young boys that come through as well. So, yeah, um, my advice to them is make sure you enjoy it, man, because mm. maybe I didn't enjoy it as much as I should have. Yeah, it was more of, I guess it was more of a, a job, wasn't it? It's more of a, just a job um, than it is now. You know, there's a lot more. There's a lot more to it now. You know, you've got the social media aspect. Yeah. You've got. The, the deals, the deals with the sports brands and stuff yeah, like that, and everyone's yeah. trying to like knock on your door. Yeah. But um, yeah, so going back to that, you, you, you just touched on, you know, um, like friendships with uh, with other people yeah. and the competitiveness. Now, you obviously made friends at Charlton. Mm -hmm. You made friends with people, what fellow fellow strikers, yeah, yeah. people that you were literally vying for a spot with. Yeah, yeah. You know, how did you how did you maintain that friendship? How did you maintain that friendship with them, knowing that you know what I could be taking your yeah, place as well? Yeah. You know what it is? It, it all boils down to your hard work you put in so if I, if I feel comfortable that I've worked really hard mm. um, and I'm in the team I think my competitors my teammates they'll be happy for me yeah. do you know what I mean like yeah, yeah, so if yeah, they feel yeah. like I put in hard work and yeah. I'm in the team through merit mm. I think then it's more it's more acceptable you can sort of get on with saying you know what he worked really hard yeah. he deserves being the team now I'm gonna work hard and try and get myself in the team mm. so um, I'm good friends with Sean Bartlett Jason Yule um, yeah. and they both were strikers and yeah. to this day we're good friends we meet up all the time I think it was healthy competition yeah and, and I think we all acknowledge the work we all put in at different times of the season mm. and we all had different trades that we brought to the team um, and it was important over a season 
that we, we all were involved and I think we all knew that and as I say we're really good friends now and yeah. I think as long as you feel comfortable with the work you put in I think you'll understand if someone's playing ahead of you or, or you understand why you're in the team and yeah. they're not in the team. So was there never a time when you thought to yourself I should be in a team ahead of this guy man, what's, what's going on, what can I do, what can I do to, yeah. to actually get there? Yeah, I think, yeah, so a lot of the times you do question that but then when you get in on Monday you have to work harder um, and attitude as well, attitude is massive um, yeah, yeah. to managers, to coaches, to everyone watching you so if I'm not in the team on Saturday and I come in on Monday and I'm moping and soaking around mm. then I know for sure I'm not going to be in the team next Saturday if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, that's true. Where if I come in on Monday with a different attitude, depending on how the game's gone on Saturday, if we've lost or we've drawn and someone didn't play well, mm. there's a there's an opening for me. Yeah. But it, it's always about myself. So mm. if I come in there and I work hard, then there's a chance. But if I if I come in and have the, the wrong mindset, then yeah. I guarantee you I won't be in the team on Saturday regardless of how how the game went the Saturday before. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that, man. I get that. And uh, yeah, it is hard. I mean, healthy competition is good competition. Yeah. And, and and I think I've, even I've grown up and, and said that to myself. I mean, I used to play in goal. So yeah. it was one position. Mm -hmm. It was literally one yeah. position. And I used to think to myself, God, man, like, how, was I gonna, how can I get get ahead of this keeper? But, I think keepers the the, the worst. Because I know keepers that mm. will not play all season. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like number twos, number threes. If the first team keepers, Fit, he plays every every week. That's so it, and that's it. I know that mentality of the, the, what, which you keepers have, I really admire because yeah. um, I know keepers that haven't played for two or three seasons but still come in every day and train like, yeah. like they're going to play Saturday. And it was hard, I mean, at Charlton especially, I mean, I, you know, I had a little stint at Charlton as a schoolboy yeah. and I remember, you know, get, going into the Premiership, you know, you had Sasha Illich yeah. going yeah. into the Premiership yeah. and, um, you know, he came from the non-league yeah. scene, you know, he yeah. came from the non-league scene, story, came out so of nowhere. Right. I mean, yeah, he's got the best story and yeah. uh, one of the best stories anyway and, um, you know, he, he, Went to the Premiership, obviously saved that um, penalty. that penalty from uh, Kevin Phillips. Yeah, yeah. Good and uh, and then he gets into the Premiership. He makes one mistake, and then Dean Kiley. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. And that's that's the hardest thing. And you know, we didn't really see him again, to be honest no. with you, after that, did we? So, no. You know what? It's about. Mm. It goes back to mentality as well, isn't it? Yeah. So, what's your response like after making a mistake? Do you know mm. what I mean? Like I, I spoke about. Obviously, I do strikers, and that's. I spoke to Which we'll my, touch on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk to my strikers. When you miss a target, what, what's your next shot going to be like? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, what's your mindset going to be like? Okay, yeah. I'm going to push that to the side. Yeah. And now I'm going to score my next one, or I'm going to hit the target. I'm going to make the keeper work, mm. rather than dwelling on the last thing that happened. And a lot of people mm. will fall out of the game due to mindset. Um, mm. And it's, it's massive, and, and playing at the top level, unfortunately, it's probably about 80% mindset. Yep. How you conduct yourself mm -hmm. and how you recover from the bad times. Yep, no, definitely, definitely. And uh, yeah, it is. That mindset is, is a lot. And, and touching onto that, you know, your mindset, how did you maintain a positive mindset? Obviously, you got your family, mm. you got your family at a young age, mm. you know, your wife, she, I'm sure she played an instrumental part. Yeah, but, um, you know, how did you keep your mindset by going into training and, mm. and actually keeping that positive mindset all the time? You know, I used to have I used to have my quiet moments to myself. So sometimes, depending on how the session will go, mm. or whether or not I'm in the team or out the team, because there were, there were times when I'm not in the team for six weeks because the mm. team's won, not lost. Um, so yeah, it's it's all about yourself, and I, I speak about it all the time, and I speak to kids about it. It's all about yourself. Um, yeah. um, I couldn't afford to to turn up to training, especially as a, a black man. Yeah. I could, I can't afford to turn up to training with a, a chip on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Because that chip's a lot bigger than everyone else's. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Me. Like, because it's me. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, and that's not yeah. a black and white thing. It's just um, how it was back in my day. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, I always had to make sure I had my moments. My quiet moments were to myself and with my wife. And mm. obviously, I used to offload on her sometimes. <laughs> but I think she understood. She yeah. understood, and it was. Yeah. It was quite important that I um, vented sometimes, um, mm. like she does with me. Do you know mm. what I mean? But it's all about mindset, and it's all about how you react when you get back to, to training. And are you positive? Um, are you a positive person in and around the building? Yeah. I always try to be um, a positive person. So if I'm not in the team, I'm going to bring something to the to the squad. Yeah. Which was yeah. my character and yeah. my professionalism, and and making sure, regardless of not 
if I'm in the team or not, mm. that I'm a, um, I'm a good influence on the squad. Definitely, definitely. No, definitely. Positivity is key. And even I'm, I'm learning that now as well, you know, even at, at the tender age of um, 21. Myself. Yeah, and the rest. Know, I'm learning it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm learning it myself as well. You know, that positive, positive mind, positive <laughs> attitude. And even in fitness as well, <laughs> making people have that positive mind to tell yeah. them, like, you know, you've got to do it. You go and do it. Yeah. Just go and do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's key. Um, Right, so we'll, we'll we'll go into the we'll go into like you know the the high the, the the highs and the highs and the highs. Right, so even apart from myself, you know what when we done the the shooting academy the other day, um, you know the best goalkeeper. Who, who was the best goalkeeper that you played against? Played against. <laughs> played against. Well, apart from you. Apart from me. Um, apart from me. Um, <laughs> you know what I played against? I was at Schmeichel's. Um, I think Ed, I think he's probably the best keeper that has probably graced the Premiership. Yeah. You watch his son play now, and his son's a, a, mm. a carbon copy of him, and um, he's won the league in it with Leicester, and he made it was a massive part of of winning the league. And I think in order to win something, you've got to have a really good keeper. Yeah. And I think Schmeichel's was a, a key. It's key. a Casper. Yeah. It was. Oh, yeah. Casper. It was right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he had his dad there, didn't he? he, he yeah. Look at look at what he was yeah. looking at. So. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like so. Yeah. And Peter as well played against both of them. Mm. Um, so, I mean, like they just had a presence about them. Um, yeah. The way they organised the defence, there would be times where I felt like I was in in space, and then you'd hear a noise from behind you from the keeper. Cover, stand back, sit back. He's there. Do you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, the defender gets back gets back into position because yeah. the keepers um, organise these defence. And I think as well as as well as being a good shot stopper, he was an organiser, which, yeah. which is something strikers hate because we're looking for those gaps that the defenders are leaving. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he always made sure those gaps were covered. So uh, it's much more than than um, than shot stopping. Yeah. And, and obviously how you kick a ball. Of course, definitely right. So we're gonna we're gonna don't worry, mate. We're going on to the best goal soon. Mm -hmm. Best def best defender you've played against. Um, you know, Hardest defender, should I say, you've played against? It's crazy, isn't it? Like, because obviously I played against the Invincibles, um, and to pick one out of them is crazy. Then you go looking at Vidic, Rio, um, John Terry. Um, if I had to pick one, um, and I'm literally just saying this name, I would say Vidic. I think he, he was yeah. un uncompromising, savage. Um, he, had, <laughs> he had every single thing. Rio read the game really well. Mm. Um, John Terry read the game really well. Then you got Sol Campbell, and these these people are all in the same bracket. Yeah. Um, but for me, I think the aggression that Vidic showed sort of set him apart from, from everyone else. For okay, me. all right, fair enough. All right, best goal. Best goal I've scored? Yep. Um, I would, it would have to be my third one against Liverpool. Um, just actually because... <laughs> yes! I know you just won the league, so... No <laughs> um, it was It was at a time in my career where I felt like I, um, I weren't in the team. And then all of a sudden, he scored two, two almost not tap-ins, but two okay goals against Liverpool. And then yep. obviously getting the ball in your own half from your keeper. Um, I speak to Dean Kiley all the time, and he, he always tells me I, I need to compliment him more about his assists for my goal. <laughs> so that's for you, Dean. Hopefully thank, you're listening. Thank, yeah, thanks for the assist. <laughs> but obviously, yeah, getting the. I say not many people get the, the ball from their keeper in their own box and, yeah. and drive all the way up to the other field and, and score yeah. from 25, 30 yards. So, yeah, it was a good day because, as I say, a lot of my family support Liverpool, so I probably had about 30, 30 people watching me that day. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, I mean, there's only six, I think six people that's ever scored a, a hat-trick against Liverpool. And to be to be one of those in the Premiership is, is such a, a good achievement for me. And it's something that people can't take from me as much as they would like to. <laughs> that's it, man. That's it. So, yeah, that's it. Exactly. And I'm just moving on to it. I, you know, Liverpool fans, you, okay, well done. You won the league. <laughs> but they get on my nerves. Yeah, and yeah, how man. was that feeling of that hat trick? And then that celebration, I remember. I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember <that's, laughs> But that feeling, obviously, yeah, that feeling must have been amazing for you. A hat trick against, you know, a, a top Premier League team. Yeah. You know, no, no matter where they were at the time. But I think they, they won they the, the Champions League. I think a year after that, or yeah. a couple of years after that. Mm. So, hey, Liverpool had no mugs at any point. Like even when they were, um, even when they were starting again and they were trying to redevelop their, their squad and their team, they always. If you look at it, there's Suarez, Torres, they've had these people, Owen, Heskey, mm. they've always had They've always Gerard. had top players, yes, man. they've yeah. always had top yeah. players, regardless. Yeah. They, obviously, this is the first time they've won the league, but they've always been challenging for Champions League and Europa League, so they're, mm. they're a big team all around the world, and I think every club would acknowledge that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right, so, 
we had the football career. We had it. Well, to, for me, it's for me looking at your foot, looking for me looking back at your football career. It was a great football career, man. You know, seeing you in, in the Premiership, mm -hmm. representing. Now you're giving back to the youngsters. So tell us what you're doing now. Yeah, so I've, I've set up a, um, it's, it's a finishing workshop. I call it Lisby Finishing Workshop. So it started two years ago. Um, when I first started, it was, it was one of those, I'm going to do this, I'm going to yeah. see how it goes. Mm. Um, so this is a, a bit, probably a bit like yourself. If you've, if you've got an idea and you want to implement it, I think the best thing to do sometimes is just do it. Yeah. Like, do yeah. you know what I mean? A lot of yeah. people, we do it on our own, we decide when's the right time. The, the right time to do it is now. Yeah. If you're Definitely. going to do something. Yeah. So I just obviously um, put it out there, said I'm doing a finishing work school. I had two or three kids for the first four or five months, but I kept on persisting. Yeah. Um, and now, obviously, uh, I got do. a massive squad yeah, there, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, <laughs> and obviously, a waiting list now for kids yeah. that, that want to come in. But um, I try and I try and give them all my experience. Mm. So it's, as I say, I try rather than saying it's a finishing sessions, it's a workshop because, as you well know, I like to talk. Um, <laughs> so it's we both do that. Yeah, no, it's exactly. All good. <laughs> so it's, it's important, even with I mean, even with your sessions, it's, it's important that we just don't let people do the exercises. Mm. That we explain why they're doing it and how it's going to make a difference and the, and the impact it will have on themselves, mm. um, especially as strikers. Yeah. It's, it is a, it's so mentally draining. Mm. As, as we spoke about earlier, if you miss a chance, what do you do? What do you do? Do you, do you, um, do you go into your shell mm. or do you put yourself in a position to score more goals? Yeah. Um, because if you don't put yourself in that position, you won't score goals. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. I'm just trying to get them to understand in order to score goals, there's little little things you've got to implement like your first touch in and around the box yeah. your movement to create room for yourself and your teammates so mm -hmm. it's more to finishing than finishing if that oh, makes definitely, sense definitely definitely so um, i'm just trying to pass on my knowledge to to the next generation and obviously if i always think to myself i had someone similar to myself yeah. around at a younger age um mm. the highs that i would have gone to so I, it's also about the child in it and how much they want to learn yeah. it it's not, it it's not a daddy daycare where you drop your kid off <laughs> um, for an hour and a half and then That's come it. back for them. It is intense training and there's a, a lot of information yeah. to be taken on board as well. Yeah, I've seen it, man. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen it online. I've obviously, I've been, I've, I've seen it as well live. Live, you was there, well, oh yeah. man, yeah. That's it. We're gonna do it all We've again next week for that as well. Oh uh, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. It will be edited in anyway, so um, it's all good, man. Um, right, to wrap it up, just to wrap it up, like right, one more before we wrap it up. Uh, so when the dads drop their kids off to the, the finishing workshop. How many photos do you take with probably the parents? Um, More than the kids. You know what? It's, it's quite funny, isn't it? Because I think sometimes parents are coming here to pay just to see. To yeah, see yeah. No, you know what it is? I think, I think the parents. I think it's quite refreshing for them to see someone like myself mm -hmm. speaking to them. I'll take time out yeah. to talk to the to the dads and mums um, to let them know how their child is going. And I think mm -hmm. that knowledge I give to them, hopefully they can pass on to their kids as well. And yeah. I don't. I think you know me quite well. I don't see myself as as anyone different to anyone else. I'm, nah, that's it, man. I'm just someone mm. that that worked really hard at what I did, um, and I achieved a lot mm. through hard work. And uh, people in different forms of life, you you work really hard at what yeah. you do, um, and I think. It, we shouldn't put ourselves on pedestals and people shouldn't put people on pedestals and um, we're all the same and, and I've always seen myself like even though I was in the premiership um, mm -hmm. I remember going out with my friends and people like staring at me and I used yeah. to walk up to them and go hello how are you doing yeah because they're scared to come over and talk so That's it, man. That's um, it. it's good to be it's good to be reachable and retouchable because the same people you see on the way up is you're gonna see on the way down isn't it? Aye, exactly. so it's exactly. important to keep that exactly. character man and, and maintain the, the good person you are. That's it, man. Well, bro, we're gonna wrap this up. Absolutely amazing. This guy, you got a youngsters. If you're gonna, if you want to be strikers, this is the man <laughs> to learn from. Yeah, you know I mean, one day. Uh, well, no, for, actually, actually, to wrap it up, can I still be a professional footballer? Um, how old are you? Thirty-six. No. All right. No. <laughs> All right. Straight answer. Straight answer. That's it. That's it. He's being honest. He's being honest. Anyway, Kev, listen. Cheers, it's been amazing, right. man. Great All right, guys. Today, don't man. forget to like, share, and subscribe. Do your thing. Yep. Later. Oh. Mo Rock. Cheer. Oh.